I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm thinking fruit now. I just can't banish these images. I'm, I'm turning into a fruitologist. Um, but what I love Delaney's uh, analogy and her question, but what she didn't tell you, and I cannot imagine why, is that the durian, I don't know if anybody knows what a durian is, the smelliest, most pungent, offensive fruit that you're ever going to come across. It tastes fab, but it really does smell disgusting. But we are moving on to fragrant things. And so it is my great pleasure to introduce Lindsay Clay, who is the CEO of Thinkbox. Uh, and she's going to bring up broadcasters Jonathan Allen from Channel 4, Matthias Berg, who I know you've already seen, uh, from TV4 Group, Alan Dark from Rogers Communications, and Stefan Karubler from RTL AdConnect. So, Lindsay and your broadcasters, please come up. So, good morning, everyone. I think we have a... Do we have a Can chair too many? Why don't you come snuggle up? Have we got... Oh, yes, no, just the right... No, not quite. Uh, no, come come, cl come closer, come on. <laughs> Collaborating and all. Uh, so welcome, everyone, to this session. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having us here. Uh, this session has actually uh, been uh, facilitated and organised by uh, EGTA, so a uh, huge thank you to them. They're a fabulous organisation. If you don't know them, you should. Uh, they are the European Trade Association uh, representing the European sales houses for uh, TV and radio. Uh, do all sorts of great work. But in particular, uh, what they have uh, been facilitating recently is the setup of the global TV group. So, um, you know, one of the challenges I think for TV is that it's largely a local business with huge global competitors. Uh, but now we have uh, the Global TV Group, which is a, a friendly cooperation and collaboration uh, between uh, TV companies and TV trade bodies around the world. And, uh, oh, I just need my little clicker. And uh, one of the first outputs that we've got that uh, we are able to share with you today is uh, what is called uh, the Global TV Deck. So if you imagine that is like the uh, Thinkbox killer slides, but on an international basis. Uh, so the Global TV Group is all the um, EGTA countries and uh, you know, other markets, including the US, Canada, Australia, Brazil, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we're going to uh, be presenting a couple of those slides today. And uh, the idea is that um, you know, it will give you uh, global uh, proof of TV's power and popularity across a whole number of different uh, measures. So uh, if you see, that is the link there. If you want to take a picture of that, um, I'll be uh, repeating that at the end so um, you can get access to it. But we, EGTA will be regularly updating these slides and adding more and more markets as time goes on. So hopefully this should be a really useful um, go-to place uh, for everything you ever need to know about TV. Uh, so uh, we have a very, very fine uh, panel with us today. Uh, delighted to have them with us. So, of course, we have um, uh, Jonathan Allen here, uh, Stefan uh, Karouble, who is the um, MD of RTL AdConnect, and that is uh, for uh, total video sales across 12 markets in Europe. We have uh, Alan Dark, thank you very much for joining us, uh, SVP Media Sales, Rogers Communications in Canada. Uh, and, of course, uh, Matthias Berg, you are world famous already, thanks to your barnstorming performance already this morning. So, is there anything le left to say on TV, Matthias? But, uh, uh, very. So this is uh, a quick fire uh, session, apparently. So uh, we are going to be asking uh, two questions, and each of them will respond on them. Uh, the first question is, um, as you all know, you know, this whole uh, event is about the future of TV, and TV is changing. If TV is moving into the world of uh, addressability, personalization, segmentation, taking all the um, fantastic things that uh, internet media can do and putting them through the filter of really high quality, premium, uh, brand safe TV, everything. And so the first question I'm going to ask uh, is uh, why do you think uh, t TV is the next big thing in media? So, Stefan, do you want to um, start with that? Yeah, uh, so as you, uh, some of you may have heard me yesterday, and I will repeat myself, I was on a panel yesterday, and I, and I think we're really living uh, exact, exciting times at the moment, and sec uh, TV has never been as sexy as, as today, as a matter of fact, and uh, if we can maybe uh, uh, click on yeah, any, sure. uh, a little uh, um, slide here, um, uh, that's what we call at RTL, or Total Video Ecosystem. I'm not sure if you are familiar with Total Video, uh, we decided a, a few years ago to rename a little bit the acronym TV at RTL, uh, meaning television or traditional television, into Total Video, because it's 
above, and it's much more than just broadcasting video. And this is the ecosystem we're thinking uh, about. And at the very center, you have content, compelling content, premium content. And then you have all the possibilities around this content. It's about linear TV, of course. But on top of linear TV, thanks to digitization and, and technology, you have VOD, VOD. And then now you have targeting possibilities with addressable TV. But on top of uh, uh, technology, you also have creative. You know, don't forget, and I think yesterday there was a lot of question about creativity. Uh, creativity is about uh, you know, special ads, uh, branded content, uh, um, uh, endorsement from celebrities, influencers marketing. You have also AR, VR cap capabilities. And we're heading to this programmatic world, now very, very clear in the digital uh, video uh, side. And which is which will come at some point of time okay. in the TV industry. And do you think it's more helpful to position TV as part of video than reclaim the word TV? I don't, I don't know what you've decided in other markets on that topic. Yeah, I mean we're going the same way. Uh, we we still call it total TV. Mm -hmm. um, just to emphasize that TV is a way of telling uh, his story independent okay. on platform. Okay, Alan? Yeah, you, I would agree. You're I in the TV game still. We're still uh, f fully uh, invested in the television game and we think okay. it's here for, uh, gonna be around for a long time. Okay, great. Uh, so Matthias, do you want to just uh, respond to that same question? Uh, if TV is the next mm. hot thing. Yeah. Uh, well, I think those of you who heard me before uh, can tell I have some confidence in TV as, a, <laughs> as an industry. But uh, to be honest, uh, uh, the next hot thing, that sort of implies that you would buy TV because it's hot. Mm. And that for me is not the case. Uh, the, the, the hot thing is impact. It's value for your money. And it has always been. I think what we're seeing is that after a couple of years uh, we, with an extremely uh, fast pace of change in our industry, people are coming back to fundamentals. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I get for my money? What kind of impressions am I getting? What's the value? And at the end of the day, what's the impact? Mm -hmm. And when they, they, they return to uh, value for money, obviously, uh, for many reasons, uh, TV is back in fashion, if you will. Okay. But, but uh, it's back in fashion because it delivers impact, not because it's a hot thing. Okay. And Jonathan, do you get the sense that um, advertisers are going for value or uh, weighing up things based on cost only? Um, well, it depends who you ask. I yeah. mean, the procurement uh, team like a low cost per thousand, and that can mm -hmm. drive uh, very much the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. um, I think enlightened clients, enlightened, enlightened uh, procurement people are after value and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the ones that measure it, measure it properly clearly uh, value um, the premium nature of TV and, and the way it delivers and the ROI and all okay. that kind of stuff. So. Okay, great. So do you want to um, uh, respond to that question as well? So uh, why, why do you is think TV, TV, TV is the next big thing in media? Because uh, it is. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think, uh, listen, TV is by far and away the best medium. You know, everybody knows that. <laughs> uh, and in terms of everything you can ever measure, uh, it is, is this or that. But it's, it's getting better. Um, so I think the application of um, first party data into the TV ecosystem. We're, we're bringing kind of the best of the internet into television. Mm -hmm. So whether that's through OTT, and I know Matthias was talking about this this morning, OTT mm -hmm. uh, asking our viewers to register uh, with us. So we've got over 16 million viewers in Channel 4 now. Um, you know, all audited, you know, all absolutely clean data, uh, which facilitates, you know, much better targeting. Um, clearly, there's a load of first party data that the platforms have, and it's a billing relationship. So again, it's very robust, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's Sky or Virgin. Um, and I think you're, you're seeing all the broadcasters collaborating more in sharing that data. Mm -hmm. um, and I think over the next five to 10 years, you know, we will be in this world where, if you want to, um, we'll have a kind of 100% addressable kind of ecosystem, which I think, okay. you know, the combination of big brand fame and broad reach and all that kind of stuff won't go away. I think that'll probably still be 75, 80% of mm -hmm. telly. Um, but for those advertisers who do want a, a tight, more tightly targeted um, offering, uh, it should bring new money. And I think, you know, again, it's great to be collaborating around the world, but also within market to, to mm -hmm. make that happen. Um, and on top of that, I think what, what you've got best with TV is in most markets, you've got a very robust joint industry research as well. So you've got the best of first party data, but you've also got the best uh, you know, in terms of panel and measurement and making sure that's true, mm -hmm. which obviously can't be the same for uh, some of our other friends in the digital world. 
Okay, so uh, I'd be interested in, in uh, the, the rest of the panel's views on that point about, um, you know, the way TV is changing and the ultimate split. Are we going to move wholesale to, you know, addressability in every case? Is, is that what you think will, uh, clients will be best served by? Or is it going to be a balance between, you know, pretty much as it is now, plus, you know, overlays of addressability on top of it? Well, again, it's a balance, I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, dep depending on what the advertisers need, you need brand awareness, you need reach. Mm -hmm. And I think with TV today, uh, we're going to show a few slides afterwards about the reach of TV. It's mm -hmm. huge, it's massive, and you need that to, mm -hmm. uh, to deliver your, uh, um, uh, your, your, your message uh, and, and be able to sell your products. But of course, uh, some categories or, of, of clients might need to go a little bit more into the targeting area, mm -hmm. and I think that's what we saw yesterday. Uh, thanks to addressable capabilities, what we are able now with TV to, to address more, more adver advertisers, more clients who, who were not necessarily thinking about TV first uh, uh, without this capacity of, of addressable. Okay. Yeah, I, w I, would, I totally echo sentiments here. I think certain customers, certain clients are more, uh, are farther down the road, uh, you know, capturing their own first party data. Um, and those will want to start to unlock those powers, mm -hmm. but not everyone is, is there. Um, and I think many still have KPIs against mass, mass reach. And so the ability and the strength of television is telling story to reaching 99% of a, of a country in, a, in 30 days is, is pretty powerful stuff. Okay. And uh, finally, you, Alan, uh, what do you think? Why do you think TV is the next big thing in media? Well, I, I mean, I was going to go on the, the addressable train mm. as well. I think, you know, we have a real opportunity to unlock the power of television mm. even further than we have today. Okay. I mean, unlocking a customer's first party data, <laughs> being able to more narrowly target a, a subset of, a, of, a, of, their, uh, of their target. Is, is, has real potential for them. Mm -hmm. I also think, you know, and I think the Google guys talked about it earlier, and I saw some stats about Facebook's growing number of, of customers. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our business is still driven by probably, you know, 80% of our revenues come from our top 20 customers, 20% mm -hmm. of our customers. There's a real opportunity through Addressable to start to unlock the long tail for okay. television and enable new new participants to uh, tell better stories. It's, it's interesting that, isn't it? And that, that is quite a different thing between, you know, the, where the growth uh, from Google and Facebook has largely come from, which is that long tail and, and uh, TV. So anybody else got anything uh, to add on that? I, I'd say, uh, I mean, we do addressable uh, in Sweden. We, we, we put our inventory, our digital inventory, in, in together with linear and digital. Okay. And at the end of the day, uh, it's up to the advertiser to choose what do you go for. Do you go for the, the broad reach or do you go for the more targeted uh, uh, campaigns? Mm -hmm. a and I think like many other things, it's not either or. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll see advertisers combining the reach and uh, as a, a broadcaster, we increase, we increase our reach thanks to our digital progress. Okay. So you, you'll, you'll have broadcasters going for, for reach, but maybe uh, finding, you know, I don't know, four, five, six sub-segments within that reach. And I, know, I don't know if it's been used, but, but we talk about, about target reach. I, you start with the reach, and then you divide the reach yep. as long as it makes sense. Because okay. there's also logistics uh, behind uh, targeted TV video campaigns. Different uh, videos, uh, different uh, messages, and so on and so forth. So okay. I think from reach to targeted reach is the way I'd say we're going. Okay, great. Uh, right, we're going to move on to yeah, one more to add something. Yeah, yes. yeah one, one more thing about addressable because we're all, always thinking about addressable TV as mm. targeted advertising and okay, you're going to reach a, a particular spot to that type of household, etc. We're always forgetting also some additional capabilities. We, we've been running a lot of addressable campaigns in, in, uh, in Germany basically thanks to a smart clip. And there is also this retargeting capabilities, which is, allows us, in fact, to not only uh, push the right uh, spot to, the, to this specific households, mm -hmm. but also to say, okay, how many people have seen this ad? And then after a certain level, therefore? we can push another ad. Mm. Uh, uh, so the retargeting capabilities of addressable TV is also something we, we don't have to 
underestimate. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful. Okay. Uh, one other build on that. How are you uh, addressing the issues of um, devices? Because, of course, you know, it's, uh, that's, that's one of the big challenges, isn't it, which is how to look at this. It's different on the TV set than it might be on a uh, mobile connected device or, or on a laptop. Um, so, you know, how are you addressing the challenges of that? Well, I, I think we, ha we have to adapt to the whole uh, ecosystem, I mm. guess. There, is, uh, there are plenty of technologies to, today to, uh, to be able to address a, a TV campaign uh, to a, a TV screen and to a, uh, you know, a smaller screen. Uh, in, uh, in the digital area, for instance, uh, DSPs are very powerful. We're using an RTL uh, DSP called VideoAmp. Mm -hmm. coming from the US and it's really optimizing uh, your, uh, your uh, programmatic campaign on different screens. In the US it's working also in the OTT environment, mm -hmm. not yet in Europe but it will soon. Okay. And that's the way yeah, we For, for us, uh, there's two main things, I think data, firstly on every single platform where we're direct to viewer, we, we demand registration now so mm. we're fully addressable across all those platforms. Um, where we're going through a third party um, like Virgin and Sky, We've had, we have agreements with them both now to, to give us data and on a blind basis, so we don't obviously get access to their, their viewers, but we define audiences and, and can buy through them. Um, the second is interactive ads. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we're working with our kind of partner there to, to deliver interactive ads on the big screen now as well as the small screen. So okay. again, it's more tricky on a big screen, um, but it is possible. Um, but yeah, you've got, to, you've got to develop your product for a different experience on different platforms. Okay, great. Uh, do you have something to add? Myself? Yeah, no, along the same point. I mean, again, it's for us as a broadcaster, not an option. Uh, the users out there, we're going to present it on whatever, yeah, uh, yeah. whatever device they, they, they want. They will choose what device they want yeah, to watch. Yeah. And yeah. the same for the advertisers. If you today buy the TV4 digital inventory in a pro programmatic environment, you can choose devices. Yeah. Okay. Which ones do you want? Which ones do, don't you want? I think we're also unlocking audiences that we hadn't unlocked before. It's funny, I, you know, I, uh, we do a lot of sports, OTT, mm. and uh, you know, I'm, uh, in the evenings I'm, I'm watching kids doing homework in coffee shops with the hockey game you know, uh, while they're doing their, doing I'm their work. I'm not sure we should be endorsing that behavior. Uh, I, I personally, I'll take the eyeballs anywhere yeah. I can get them. So, uh, uh, fully yes, supportive. excellent. <laughs> to be encouraged, for sure. All right, we're going to move on to the um, uh, second question now. So, uh, as you all know, but thank you for all your support in uh, contributing to the Global TV Deck. Um, we, uh, we have a whole range of different slides. If you just had to get one of these uh, messages in front of an advertiser, what chart would you choose um, to present to uh, to an advertiser. So, um, Stefan, do you want to start? Yeah. Uh, so, one chart is the one that will come. Is uh, I will present that this one that you've heard about yesterday already, but linear TV is still resilient. It's still the big thing. We're talking here about four hours and seven minutes in viewing time. And if you take just a step back uh, a few years ago, it's uh, even though the penetration of uh, new devices, mobile devices, uh, smart TVs, flat screen TVs, even though this has uh, had a tremendous uh, increase, we are still plus 39 minutes versus 1996, which is great. You can see the different countries over here, uh, of course, different uh, levels in, in each and every country, but look at uh, the US, four hours and 30 minutes, we're still behind it. Uh, so I, I think it's still huge, and if you yeah, just Here, keep, why don't you do yeah, it? I can do it. Mm. And uh, uh, another uh, piece of statistics here. Uh, again, it's about reach, and there's, there is no uh, uh, better way, or having better put, uh, there is no other way today to reach 72 percent of uh, your targets within within a day, and and this is uh, possible thanks to television. Okay. So if you wanted to know that, uh, those reach, uh, you know, t total viewing by different markets, have you got anything else to show us? Yes, I do. <laughs> so this is about linear TV, yeah. but of course, uh, uh, some other things are coming up and other ways of uh, watching TV are here, of course, and in the deck of uh, the, the global uh, TV deck, there's plenty of information you will find. And what you see, this is the UK, for instance, a very specific market, but what you see is you have linear TV, but it's not only about linear TV. Uh, uh, people, you know, uh, general target groups, but also uh, younger target groups are in contact with TV content 
in some other forms of, of, of viewing. It could be linear TV, it could be uh, uh, catch-up TV, it could be broadcasters VOD, and at the end, if you combine all those different sources of viewing, then you see that the majority of uh, their video viewing is against TV content. And this is true not only in the UK, it's true in Canada, it's true in France, it's true in Germany, it's true in Netherlands, and I think I have another one, Spain, and I think that's about it. One more. Yeah, one more. Okay, yeah. Sweden again. <laughs> Sweden. Okay. Uh, it's and on everywhere that note, the same in uh, Europe. Why don't you pass the clicker to uh, Matthias? So, what, what um, chart from the global deck would you choose to share with advertisers, Matthias? Uh, yeah, well, I'm just uh, along the same line, and also also what we've been talking about uh, this morning. Uh, viewing is changing. Uh, there's no doubt about it. As you can see, one third is OTT, uh, where I'm from. In the younger demos, it's 50% it's plus uh, being viewed uh, OTT. The main point here being a broadcaster, being an advertiser, that leaving the YouTube caller out, all the other ones are also us. Uh, we run the fastest uh, growing SVOD service, AVOD service. Uh, we've been, we talked this morning about time shift, operator TVE solution. As long as you make that your inventory, the entire circle is part of the broadcaster inventory. Okay. So I, I think it's, it's fair to say that TV should be considered a, a reach across all platforms uh, as we go along. Okay, and uh, slides that you would um, present? Uh, choose. Is this mine? Yeah. Can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you focus on this session? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is just ours on a TV set. Yeah. But the, the, the but it, 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 it's uh, exactly, it's basically the same uh, message as, as we've also been talking about. Uh, telling a good story is best made on the screen where you actually can see something and you actually can hear something. Uh, in, in the Swedish AWOD market, the screen that uh, grows the most in terms of consumption is the big screen. Okay. Uh, in terms of time spent, we have more than 50% of our digital inventory on big screens, predominantly using Apple TV and um, uh, Chromecast. And so so as, more, in, in, as more on demand becomes available on the big screen, they gravitate to that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and we all know that, that the digital mantra is mobile first, not for us. For us, uh -huh. it's big screen first, uh, because that's where we see the, the, the major growth in our digital consumption. And I'd say also for an advertising, looking at the, the pie chart previously, saying that, you know what, TV is in all of those uh, segments, there's one more thing to it, is that when you, when you compare AVOD uh, environments, when you compare different other kind of parts of that uh, pie, the, the broadcast part is predominantly big screen, because okay. that's Great. where you consume our product the best. Brilliant, thank you. If you pass, pass the clicker. Okay, it is, isn't it? Yeah, right, J.A., it's it, up you to you. We'll, thank you. Uh, let's just see that what this is like. Uh, same picture across a number of markets. France, Colombia, Germany, Spain, uh, UK. Same. Right. Jonathan, same question. Yep. Yeah, okay, so, um, so is Steve Biggle out there still? Where are you? Hi, Steve. So Steve and I, Steve works at ITV. Um, we both worked agency side for about 15, 20 years. Probably you're a bit, you're a bit older than me, aren't you? So probably 20 for you, 15 for me. Um, <laughs> And we, we both left agency world for an easier life on the TV side. Um, so because we like an easy life, you may as well sell something that works. So my, my thing about today is all about TV's the most effective medium uh, you can buy. I'm really pleased five or six years later it still is. Um, so in the TV deck, there's some brilliant stats around effectiveness, you know, really hardcore, proven, econometric stuff. Um, so the first slide is this one, uh, which is very recent from Thinkbox in the UK. They worked with Ubiquity uh, and Gain Theory, two kind of independent, uh, big, uh, analysis companies. Uh, they did a meta-analysis, that's what it's called, isn't it, of econometric models. Uh, you know, a thousand different studies over a number of years, uh, and they've kind of proven that, that TV delivers about 72% of the profit uh, for about 55% of the investment. And uh, TV ROI is £4.20 for every pound you spend. Uh, and I think the next nearest one was 
online video, which is about £2.30. Um, so we think that's a brilliant chart to show uh, the boardroom of clients um, because it's, it's robust data. Uh, and in fact, we had a good debate about this this morning with uh, publicists uh, uh, over breakfast um, with both ITV and Sky. Um, and this, this, this kind of data is replicated in the TV deck around the world. So I think we've got some great data uh, from Canada uh, and also Spain. And you can see that the, the variance between television and other media is significant. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I do struggle to, you know, it's quite hard to believe that anybody else would uh, not agree with that. So okay. there you go. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Jonathan. And finally, Alan. No, uh, I, what, I was, was going to, again, jump on Jonathan's train. We've got the proof that, um, you know, even, even the digital companies uh, are, are feeling the value of, of television and investing heavily in television advertising to build their brands. We got three, uh, I mean, the, the data is consistent uh, in every market. In some markets, it's growing faster than others. I know in Canada, it's one of our fastest growing categories. Okay. But some quick stats for you, in France, you know, over the last three years, digital peer plays have grown from 300 million to $440 million of investment in, in television to build their brands. Uh, in the Netherlands, it's more than doubled in the last five years. And the big killer slide that I love in the US their, their investment has grown by over $800 million in the last five years in terms of leveraging the power of television to build their brands. Okay, uh, fabulous. So uh, just that is the link again for anybody that missed it the first time around. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you contact EGTA, they will be able to um, uh, facilitate you downloading all those slides. Uh, hey. Thank you very much, panel. Thank you very much, panel <laughs> Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Time, just time for a couple of questions. So anybody, uh, I have a couple up my sleeve too, but anybody got a question, raise their hand. Yeah, one in the front there. Uh, David, yeah, get the usual drill, say who you are, where you're from. Hi, Dave Brennan, founder of Media Native and co-founder of Beat Insight. Um, the question I have is a lot of the um, discussion about the advantages of new technology and what that can do for TV, over the past five, six, seven years has been very much about improved targeting. I have seen, and this is primarily directed at Jonathan, um, an example of what's called contextual targeting, which is the ability to target the advertising based on the context of the program rather than the makeup of the audience. Mm. And I'd just like to ask the panel, given that we know TV content is so powerful, whether that actually is a more relevant targeting criterion than simply what are often sometimes um, out-of-date demographic um, targets? Yeah, so, so I think there's, there's two answers to that. I think firstly, over the last couple of years, we've done loads of great linear campaigns with advertisers in which we've worked with them to deliver 50 or 60 different TV ads. And we've provided the creative agency with the scripts and the, and the plots and, the, and what's actually going to happen in the program. So we've had direct advertising that relates to the scripts and what the, the, the talent has said in the program going directly into the break. And the effectiveness of those campaigns has been through the roof, you know, 25, 30% more effective than previous campaigns they've run that haven't been contextual. So that's, you know, big campaigns for McDonald's. Uh, we, was, we sold about a million more cups of coffee uh, for Pinterest this year. Again, their, their prompted and, and spontaneous awareness went up through the roof uh, versus their previous campaign. So I think uh, at a, a linear level, you can, you can definitely do that, but that takes quite a lot of, uh, I guess, manual collaboration. Uh, we actually, because of all the technology uh, and the way search works, and particularly you know, if voice search takes off, at the moment we are... I don't know, it's called, is it meta-tagging? I think we're meta-tagging all of our content. So we're basically, every bit of the content, you know kind of what's going on. Um, and as a result of that, it may, be, it may well be in about six months to 12 months, you will be able to buy a package, which is, I don't know, sunny beach, sunny beach moments. And we may be able to sell a contextual package across the year um, to advertisers that's linked into um, the programs. And then again, that would be across digital, but also linear. So it, it's coming. And we definitely think it's a powerful uh, and effective way of, of advertising. I don't know where anybody else is. I mean, in, in some aspects, contextual targeting is what we always have done, yeah, right? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, totally. I mean, you, you, you buy a program because you like sure. the environment. Yeah. But the digital space gives us just more opportunities to, to different kind of packaging. We're fortunate to, uh, enough to be running the World Cup uh, this summer on our ch channels, uh, linear as well as, as uh, uh, digital obviously will set up a private marketplace for the World Cup. 
that's a contextual targeting uh, right there. So I, I think uh, as we go along and we understand what advertisers want to have, we'll just see more layers of contextual targeting uh, in the digital space. Okay, thank you. I have just one more question, if I may. One of the things that has always characterized the TV industry, certainly in this country, is you hated each other more than you hated <laughs> the rival media. <laughs> to what extent can we expect greater cooperation, both regionally and uh, um, uh, within individual markets, between uh, traditional broadcasters to fight the bigger competition? How far can it go? Well, I might just start on that. I, think, I, I know that's I, one. I think this is, this is evidence. It is, you know, it is, it's a tricky thing, isn't it? Because you've got, you know, widely dispersed markets, individual uh, competitors in each market, but um, it is already happening via the Global TV Group. And uh, Jonathan, I don't know if you want to talk about what's going on in the UK with them um, collaborating. Yeah, I think, well, I think, you know, we've been part of ThinkBox for many years. I think it was a, that was a big first step. Um, kind of my predecessor and predecessor, our predecessors set up ThinkBox and we invest a lot of money in that as a marketing body. Um, I think all of us, Sky, ITV, um, Channel 4 decided to do even more and work better together. So we, again, we, we are collaborating and talking more about data and addressability. Uh, we've got a big TV festival uh, organised for February where we're inviting clients and planners and we're all going to be there talking about the value um, of television. And um, what about in, in Europe and uh, Canada sharing tech and things like that? Yeah, so I was going to say, I mean, we, we've, we, we follow pretty closely to what's going on here in the UK. Um, the interesting thing about Canada is many of the major broadcasters are also the MVPDs. So we are opening each other's platforms to each other. So for instance, right now I've got some uh, folks here from Bell and Chorus. They sell uh, their on-demand advertising on Rogers platforms. So we're, you know, we're starting to open up our gardens to yeah. each other and uh, there's also conversation about you know, unifying data points, creating yeah. uh, you know, okay. a Stefan? unified segmentation. Yeah. 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 Quick, um, quick, we, we yeah, just, to, yeah. to, to, to build on what you did, uh, in the UK, I think what we do at European level is already collaboration. We're not only representing our RTL at Connect, the RTL group uh, partners, we also open our uh, RTL at Connect to non-RTL group partners like ITV in the UK or RAI in Italy or Mediolan in northern Belgium, just to be able you know, to leverage the 12 big countries where we operate. Because at the end of the day, it's not only about local competition, it's about global competition. And you need to collaborate, of course, also in between different countries in order to be stronger against the gaffers, the fangers, or uh, okay. the whoever name we, we call it. All right, lovely. Thank you. I think so we have uh, uh, cooperation. Uh, harmony and we have optimism <laughs> shining out from the stage today. I hope you're all receiving the warmth over there. Okay, thank you very much, panel. Yeah. You are relieved. Thank you.